Well, hello, Pastor Jim Willie with you once again. I want to welcome you as we continue our study in the book of James. We'll be looking into the book of James uh, tonight and then probably next week, and then we'll finish uh, chapter one. Uh, I don't know about you, I've enjoyed what uh, James has told us, or the Holy Spirit has told us through James, be more proper. Uh, before we get into studying, I want to remind all of you uh, that are part of Faith Baptist Church, and of course any of you listen that aren't, you're invited also, but beginning on Sunday morning, June the 14th, uh, we will restart our Sunday school program. Also, we'll be having Children's Church Company, the AM program. Now, uh, all of you, please remember the new starting time. Uh, the Sunday school will start at 9.45 and the AM at 10.45. Many of you have been coming and you're aware, uh, but uh, we haven't seen all of you yet, and I'm sure some of you are, are uh, finding your direction, and, and so we'll welcome you back when, when you come back, and, uh, but we're, we're excited. We're very excited about beginning Sunday school together and then our AM. Uh, it it's just thrills my heart each Sunday as we come together and, and, and we worship together. And for those of you who may be concerned, we are uh, following the CDC guidelines that the state of Indiana has emailed to us and uh, social distancing, whatever word you want to use. So it's a very safe environment. So, so don't be concerned about that. We we're keeping the environment safe, but we are, are uh, worshiping. Okay, well, let's uh, open James uh, chapter 1, uh, begin reading verse 17 and 18. And uh, uh, we're going to see here uh, that God freely uh, blesses, uh, blesses us. God, God uh, doesn't hold back, and, and we're going to look at that. Look at uh, verse 17 of James chapter 1. Every good gift... Every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness. And that word literally means no change. Uh, the, theologians call the personality of Jesus Christ uh, immutable. And that means there's no change. He, he is the uh, same uh, yesterday. He, he'll be the same today and forever, the Bible describes. Uh, his immutable personality. And then uh, uh, neither shadow of turning. And so, uh, you know, the Bible says, He that glories, let him glory in the Lord. That's found in 1 Corinthians 1, 31. Uh, now, everyone listening to me right now, uh, there's some area of your life that you would like to see improved. Uh, I understand that. Uh, Christ understands that. Uh, you know, when, when it says that, it doesn't give this rosy, a false view that, that life is just going to be you're in a canoe floating down the river. Any of you ever been on a river and uh, you can turn your motor off uh, when you're flowing with the current. But if you want to turn around and go upstream, what do you got to do? You got to fire that motor up and you got to work yourself up against the stream. Well, if you just read this on the surface and some, uh, some that we will classify uh, not giving full attention to this verse, would say, well, that means that God wants your life to be smooth, and when it's not, there's some reason for it. Well, that's not the case at all. Matter of fact, if you recall the life of Jesus Christ, it was one of challenge. Uh, but, uh, but it says here, uh, we mu that even though there's areas of your life that needs improved, and even though there's areas of my life that I, that I would like to see differently, uh, we must admit that we're blessed every day. You know, I, I think about the blessings of being in America. America has some challenges. We need to pray for our nation. Uh, right now, as I'm speaking, uh, in, in some of the uh, larger areas of our country, there's people protesting and demonstrating. And we have a virus that medically can't be stopped yet or hasn't been stopped. And, and, and we have a lot of challenges. Uh, we have countries that that have countries that would like to take our liberty away. So even though America has all those challenges, I think you'd have to grant, uh, b agree with me, uh, the best place in the world to live is right here in the United States of America, where we're granted uh, freedom to worship and freedom to assemble. And uh, so, so uh, but on top of that, if you woke up this morning and, 
and there was air in your lungs, and, and if you're listening to me right now, that is the case, uh, you were blessed. God blessed you with another day. Uh, you know, I, uh, the greatest danger uh, you will have to grat uh, towards gratitude, you see, uh, to concentrate on God's blessings develops the spirit of gratitude. Uh, Thanksgiving week has always been one of my favorite weeks. Uh, I must admit there, there's uh, another motive there. Uh, I'm originally from the state of West Virginia, as many of you know, and, and that's always the first week of the West Virginia buck season. Uh, but yet uh, there's a time that even all of us hunters uh, in the Lily household, we come together. Uh, my mother and uh, wives will prepare a meal and uh, we'll come together and bow our head and blessings and and that spirit of thanksgiving uh it's special isn't it uh, i think you would agree with me it's a very special feeling to have to be grateful well the bible says because of verse 17 if we really focus on the the god of heaven the god above uh and how he takes care of us uh, there should be a spirit of gratitude uh, that, that flows through us uh, all the time, not just uh, November, and uh, we, we should be grateful. You know, now, now here, here's the story. Here's where we come into trouble. The greatest danger to, uh, to developing spirit of gratitude is the comparison exercise. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, like uh, you, you just got in your garage, you started your automobile, and you're heading to work and, and your car is functioning well and you're going to make it to work on time. Everything seems, it seems good. But yet it has a few challenges. It's got a few years and a few problems. And all of a sudden you look at the neighbor. He just came back from the dealership with, with his new automobile. And, and if you're not careful, you'll be like, well, I never can get a new automobile. I never can. And you know, you know the game I'm talking about. Uh, it's a comparison game. Uh, John the Baptist. Uh, on one occasion, John the Baptist, uh, John the Baptist literally was a minister contemporary of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist was over on one side of the, uh, of the country preaching the gospel, preaching repentance, and he had workers. He had, had people working for him. And then Jesus Christ came on the scene, uh, called the disciples and Jesus Christ. Well, uh, if, if you've read your Bible much at all, uh, there is mention of John the Baptist, even mention of his ministry, but not a, not, not a great detail. Uh, there are small sections, but the Bible continually uh, tells us of the ministry of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, John the Baptist, though, on one occasion, one of his disciples came and said, Matt, he was talking to John. He said, John, uh, he called him master, but he said, John, uh, you know, we're preaching, we're working, but everybody's following that man. And here's what John the Baptist said in John 3, 3. He said, a man can receive only what is given to him from heaven. Did you get that? God blesses us all differently, but he does bless us. And the truth of the matter is, if I get in a trap where I, I concentrate on your blessings, or you, you fall in a trap where you concentrate on my blessings, and maybe we get in that comparison game where we don't think it's matching up, uh, then uh, we'll never have the spirit of gratitude. Uh, we should be thankful that God blesses us at all. Uh, that, that's where it should be our heart of gratitude. Uh, see, God not only has given to us abundantly, but consistently. Look what it says. Neither shadow of turning. Uh, verse 17 tells us it's consistent. Uh, the Bible says that... Uh, uh, then when we go to bed at night, we wake up to new mercies, to new blessings. You see, God didn't, uh, uh, didn't end it there, did he? You know, uh, he, 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 he is planning on, if you're granted tomorrow by his providence, he is planning on blessing you. Now, there's somebody listening to me right now and say, well, Brother Jim, if this is what blessing looks like, I, I'm just a little confused. I understand that life can have its challenges and sometimes we're not wanting you uh, uh, to deny the reality of the struggles you're going through. Uh, that is something that God doesn't require of us and I sure wouldn't require of you. But yet, maybe, maybe the path out of that valley 
maybe the uh, next step, if you would, in progressing to a stronger, uh, more stable place will be developing a spirit of gratitude for what you have uh, and for what God has given you. Uh, you know, he, he's God. He, he, he may give you richly. Uh, tomorrow may be the, your best day ever. You see, we, we never know with God. Uh, we just wake up and we trust his provisions. You see, uh, it is God who su sustains us, excuse me, to the very end. Uh, the word begat uh, that he uses uh, in, in Greek means uh, to bring forth. You see, nothing can stop the hand of God. Uh, it, it's kind of easy to stop me. Uh, you know, th there's people smarter, there's people stronger, uh, people wiser, people wealthier. Uh, you can stop my movements. Uh, now, obviously, I could excel past some people's movements, but not everyone's. But that's not the case with God. When He, when he uh, uh, brings forth, it's going to be a blessing. Now, I want to speak to that person once again. I'm revisiting that earlier statement I made. Uh, you're listening to me, and this is troubling time. Uh, you know, may, may, maybe your employment isn't uh, what it was, or maybe you've been displaced from your employment. Uh, maybe some relationship struggles. Uh, you know, uh, th there's a, the list is long. I'm not going to name out every struggle you may have. Uh, but you know, when you look in the sky at night, you see stars. And when you step out on a clear day, you'll see the sun. And, and the truth of the matter is, when daylight comes, the stars go away from our vision. And when clouds go over, the sun is blocked. But can I tell you something? The stars and the sun never quit giving light. That light is blocked from us. Uh, maybe clouds have blocked the sun rays, or maybe, uh, as I previously stated, the rotation of the earth has moved us to the point where the sun itself is too bright for us to see the stars, but the stars are still shining. And, 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 and uh, when it's dark, the earth is rotating and the sun is still shining. What I'm saying is uh, the light is still going on. And you see, God is graciously good to you and I, even when we do not see it. Uh, we uh, reached the point in my life where I can talk about some things in the past. And I can assure you there were times that I didn't see the movement of God and now I sit back and when I analyze and I review, uh, there's no question. Oh, that was the movement of God. You see, I didn't see this, the light shining. It says he's the father of light. I didn't see the light. I was walking in the darkness or, 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 or the light was obstructed from my vision. But it was there and now I see it. So that's what James is telling us. James is saying, uh, grasp the light. God is good. Uh, he really is. And, and he's gracious and he gives gifts. Uh, now, all of us that are in Christ uh, are blessed no matter what our status in life is. You see, God himself is the greatest blessing we can imagine. Uh, can you, you know, there, there's nothing on earth that compared to God and his movement. Uh, I previously stated just a few moments ago about rioting and, and about uh, uh, a virus and, and about all the challenges in employment relationally and all the things we face. Uh, but would you admit with me, especially you in Christ, now if you're not in Christ, uh, we're going to give you a, a moment before we uh, close this lesson to, uh, to become a child of God. But for those of you that are that are in the family of God, would you grant me that it's just such a blessing to know, no matter how dark it is and no matter how terrible it is, that God's still in control, we rest? Uh, you know, for the last few months, this confusion that, that our nation has faced over virus, I've heard Christian after Christian say, God is in control, God is in control. Now they didn't give me words of comfort that say, hey, here's where it's gonna end and here's how it's gonna go. Now, they didn't have those answers, but there was something in their spirit that knew that God was in control. Isn't that a blessing? So if you know Jesus Christ right now, and he's your Savior, that's a blessing. It's a blessing to know that no matter what happens in your life, he is in control. He's with you. And so, uh, you know, he brings us uh, 
to full life through his perfect work. Uh, and that's what it says in, in verse 18. Of his will he begat us with the word of truth. The Bible is the word of truth. Jesus Christ stood before Pilate and he told Pilate, I am the truth. Okay, Jesus declared he himself is the truth. Jesus Christ will never lead you astray. The truth of the matter is, maybe I wouldn't even be willing to lead you astray, but I probably would because of my human shortcoming. Uh, and, and that is true for all 7 billion people on this earth. We all have limitations. We are not built true, but Jesus is. And so the Bible, Jesus Christ in John is described as the word. So the word is truth. So how are you going to find uh, a comfort? How are you going to believe that God freely blesses? How are you going to accept all these things that I'm sharing? Am I bringing these uh, from my own personal viewpoint? Is this some story I've written? No, we, we've read two verses here from God's word and we're going to read a couple more. You see, as you get into God's word, that's the reason the Bible study is so important. Now, all of you that have been tuning in, you know, on Sunday morning, we give a sermon and, and sermons are important, but you would have to agree with me. Sermons that we have to get the points of the sermon, we have to move on. This is a Bible study. If this is the only two verses I cover tonight, it's the only two verses I cover tonight. We'll, we'll do some more next Wednesday night. You see, we're taking our time. We want to know what God is sharing with us. And so, so that's what it says here. In Romans 10, 17, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you are a believer, at some point, the Holy Spirit convicted you uh, through hearing the word of God or through reading the word of God, somebody presented I've seen complete strangers walk into Faith Baptist Church before. Uh, they don't know me. I don't know them. And, and I'll be preaching a lesson, uh, not intended for them, just intended for the, uh, what God wants to do with that movement. And, and you'll see change in their face. And, and we've actually given invitations before. And people come forward. And the Word of God shook them and, and brought repentance. You see, it wasn't me. Uh, to be honest with you, I preached uh, a lot of sermons and sometimes they don't move people at all. I don't have the ability to move people, but God does and his Holy Spirit does. And that's what it says here. Uh, now, spiritual life and spiritual understanding are the best gifts you can receive. Okay, so I want to uh, take and look, we're going to look at two more verses tonight. Uh, we're going to cover four verses. That's pretty good for us, isn't it? Uh, and, and we're going to look here uh, that uh, uh, steps to reveal uh, uh, our character. Uh, excuse me there. Uh, I've got to find my eraser. Well, I'll put it away. But uh, steps to reveal. Uh, and, and, and we see this. Uh, there's a three-legged stool of perseverance. Uh, the old milking stool, maybe some of you have seen it, and it would have a leg there and a leg there, and then there'd be a leg here, and it would balance the stool. Well, the, the, the balancing uh, that we're going to find here, sorry about getting out of your screen, I I've, I've, uh, uh, want to change, change the word there, uh, uh, to, to reveal uh, our salvation. And the Bible tells us in verse 19 and 20, it says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren. That's kind of words from James, isn't it? I don't know about you, but uh, uh, I enjoy when, when, when a man takes the word of God and, and he has deep, deep conviction about the word. But yet, but he, he loves those that, that he's speaking to. And, and, that, and that's what James is doing here. He calls them beloved brethren. He, uh, that's... that's uh, 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 a dear friend, a dear friend, okay? And so, wherefore, my dear friend, let everyone be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath or anger. Now, think about that. Uh, Dale Carnegie, uh, Dale Carnegie uh, spoke about relationships from the business perspective, 
But uh, Carnegie proved that there are some successful habits of, of successful business people. But he said the following, and it grabs me. He said, you make more friends in two weeks by becoming a good listener than two years of trying to get people to listen to you. Did you hear that? Two weeks of listening and being available for people will move you further than two weeks of saying, follow me. You know, one of the challenges of, of being a pastor and being a minister and being the preacher pastor is that uh, just by the nature of my calling, uh, I have to talk a lot. I have to give the lessons a lot. Uh, I, I'm not in a position where I can listen uh, during the Sunday service, but I've tried to make it a habit to listen during the week. I've tried to make it a habit of listening when you open up about your concerns. I've tried to make it a habit of listening because there's value in listening. Uh, now I get it, when we talk, we get to share what we, we know or what's on our heart, but the Bible says plainly there's value in listening and that Dale Carnegie agrees with us. Carnegie, from my knowledge, isn't a, 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 wasn't a Christian uh, a leader here, uh, but he said, listen and, and you, you'll gain. You see, the value of patiently waiting uh, for as much information as possible, it will diffuse most flare-ups. Have you, have you ever got the surface of information and blew off? I'll have to admit, I have to sometimes turn off the news. Uh, if I'm watching a news story, before I know it, I don't have all the information, I just listen to the sound bite. And let's face it, those sound bites are, are, are put together to get our emotions anyways. Uh, but I'll listen to the sound bite before I know it. I have an opinion. I'm getting angry. I'm getting worked up. And many times, if you take time to read and, and take time to research what they're talking about, it, it, it's not near as bad. Uh, we see this a lot uh, uh, in our culture, don't we? We see a sound bite, a headline, but if you read the article, it, it isn't nearly as dramatic as the headline. And, and so we see that. Proverbs 10, 19, the book of Proverbs, a, a beautiful book. Uh, when words are many, sin is unavoidable. But he who restrains his lips is wise. Did you hear that? When words are many, sin is unavoidable. If you're the type that just flies off the handle and you just spurt out a bunch of words, sin's going to come. The sin may come in those words. Sin may come in your intention. But eventually it'll grab you. And I didn't make that up. Uh, I'm not a behavioral scientist. I'm just a minister of the gospel. I'm basing all my opinions on what God says here. And it says, when words are many, sin is unavoidable. That's Proverbs 10, 19. Read it on your own. Uh, so we see that. Uh, Jesus said, it is not what goes into a person that defiles them, but what comes out of a person. We're bringing this to a close. If you can hold on just two or three more minutes, uh, we're bringing it to a close. Uh, I know that these studies sometimes, uh, uh, they may seem lengthier than what they are, but just hang in here. Uh, there, there was a situation where the disciples and Jesus were walking through uh, the countryside and they were hungry. And, and the disciples reached and grabbed some corn, ears of corn and they, they brought those grains off that ear and, and they ate them and it happened to be the sabbath day now in the old testament uh sabbath was on a saturday so it was saturday saturday they were walking through and and, and it set the legalists off that they went bananas and, and and so jesus in his defense of what his disciples had done said the following it's not what goes in a person that defiles them but what comes out. And so uh, it's not the information necessary that comes in, but it's what you spout out and it's what you say. So remember what it said again? Be swift to hear. That means run to hear. Make every effort. That's your number one step. So anytime you're with someone, what is going to be your number one step? Listen. And then the second thing is slow to speak. Think, think what you're getting ready to say. There's been times in my life I've hurt people's feelings with no intention to hurt their feelings, but I didn't think out what I was saying. Uh, I didn't realize what they, uh, their, their background, I didn't realize who I was talking to, all types of things. So, so think 
Think out what you're going to say. And, and, and it's slow to be angry. Uh, don't be that type. We all know that person that we call them uh, short fuse or, 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 or they just ready to explode all the time. Uh, those aren't people we gravitate to. Uh, they're, they're, they're not a great benefit to us because they just make the situation dramatic all the time. Uh, so, so be patient. Now, uh, in bringing this to a close, what it literally says is do not let wrath or anger come from your personal agenda. You see, anger damages our testament. Uh, it, it just does. You see, uh, there are some occasions in the Bible where Jesus was angry, but it was proper. It's what's, what's called righteous indignation. And, and, but it, his anger never was from a personal agenda. Uh, on one occasion, they called him illegitimate. He didn't get angry. On, on another occasion, uh, uh, they called him a liar. He didn't get angry. Those were things directed to him. The only times we see him get angry when people challenge the will of his father. He came down uh, to the temple and, and they had a temple worship system where they had to pay a, a tax and it was a temple currency. And some people were ripping other people off. That made him angry because he said the following. He said, my father's house is a house of prayer. He was defending his father's house. Okay, so there's times. You're not going to go through this world never defending something. You'll never go through this world never uh, being a, a little hot around the collar. But it's what it's about. If it's your personal agenda, it's wrong and it's sinful. If it's to defend Christ or, or defend a right cause, then, then it can be way. And so in closing, I'm going to give you this, this verse. Uh, on your own, uh, you find Ephesians 4, the 26th verse. And it says, Be you angry, yet do not sin. Do not let the sun set upon your anger. So there are occasions where it's right to be angry, but that anger cannot carry over to the next day. You're settling the issue. Uh, this has to be settled. And it goes on. You see, there's uh, anger if it, it comes and it hangs tomorrow and the next day and the next day. It becomes bitterness and then it becomes, other, and those are all sin. But uh, defending what's right, uh, you know, to stand up for what's right and, and have to do it sometimes uh, with a direct uh, confrontation, that's one thing. Uh, but, but you can't sin. Your anger can't be sin. It's always sin when it's defending you, but it's not sin when it's defending Christ. And that's what Jesus did. Well, uh, next Wednesday, we'll close the book of James. Uh, we do appreciate you tuning in. And as I promised earlier, I want to speak to that person. Uh, I imagine there's somebody listening to me right now, and you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, if you're in your home or, or wherever you may be, maybe in your office, and you get a quiet moment, would you just ask Jesus to come in and be Lord of your life? And then uh, let Pastor Jim know. Uh, you can uh, send a text, email, leave a message in my office. I'd love to, uh, love to celebrate with you. I promise you I will not come to your house unless you invite me. I, I just like to uh, celebrate this with you. And for all Christians li uh, listening and all Faith Baptist Church members, uh, join me in prayer right now as we pray that God would help us develop these characters. Father, we do ask that we thank you for the book of James. We thank you for the blessing it is to our heart. And we ask you to be with us. Uh, Father, we ask that this message or this lesson, this Bible study uh, would have the impact as tended. That person who does not know you, Father, have your Holy Spirit convict them, even as yet we pray. And Father, whatever's accomplished, word and deed, we'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.